A few years ago, I built a coffee table in this type of design for my own home, and I had it published in Canadian Home Workshop magazine. And so I, so I still have it. So I'm going to bring it into the shop now and show you how a table looks built with this technique for the tabletop and uh, just give you some ideas on how I did the joinery and the size of the legs and so on. Okay, so I'll just bring that in and show it to you now. Okay, so here's the coffee table and um, you can see the top is quite thick, almost like a cutting board or butcher block type thing. I've got a two inch thick top. The length of the top is about 43 inches. And because of the difficulty of um, planning a specific length based on all these squares, you know, you might aim for 42 and end up 42 and a quarter. So if you can have a little flexibility on the final size, it sure makes your life easier. I would suggest you build the top first and then build the base after so you know exactly what that is, what that dimension is. Now the width is a little under 20 inches, about 19 and a half or so, and that's no um, coincidence. I happen to have a 20 inch wide planer, so building this I knew I wanted to build it a little under 20 so that it would fit through into that machine. Okay, you can't use that machine to plane the surface of this, in other words, end grain up, but there's another stage in the building of this where it isn't end grain up yet, where you've just glued boards together and it's all long grain on top. And if you can go through your planer at that stage, it saves you from a bunch of hand plane work. Okay, I'll just give you the general dimensions of the base too, if you're interested and you wanna build something like it. I've got legs that are about two and a half inches square at the top which is pretty big, I think, for a coffee table, but given how thick this was, I thought it needed some visual weight to handle that. And then it goes down to about a one and three quarter square bottom. Now the overhang that I chose is, uh, let's see, a little over one and a half inches on all four sides. Now, then I have a fairly beefy uh, apron here as well, uh, three and a half inches tall. And it's actually very thick, you can't tell from this side, but it's something like one and a quarter inches thick. The table is relatively heavy because this, this is a lot of wood up here. And you'll see that I also added this cherry trim piece here, which was not part of my original design. But when I stood back after I built it, you know, just a dry fit, and I had this nice heavy looking top with all these colors, and then I had a light colored base because I didn't want to detract from the interest of the top. But I kind of felt like my eye went from this area down to here and then it just was too weak visually and my eye just went down to the floor. And then I sort of clamped a piece of cherry here to see what I thought because this is cherry here. And I thought, wow, I think that really works better. So I made this piece of cherry separately, cut a rabbit in the front of this beach apron and glued it in. And I have a round over here and a round over here. So that would have been routed before I glued it in. Actually, I probably routed the top one before I glued it in because it would be hard to get in there with the router later, but I would have leveled the bottom later and then routed that round over later. Okay, the glue isn't gonna be so thick that you can't see the purple heart and walnut because it's so dark, but it really should be very nicely coated. And what I like about the heavy nap on the roller is it leaves textured glue everywhere because the hair on the roller is long. That's good. All right. So now we turn and close. Turn and close. Now this is going to be hard to close because the dowels are so tight. So, use a mallet, and I'm watching my numbers, one, two, three, four. Maybe I can just do it with my hands. Now, when I did that coffee table, 43 inches tall, long, there's no way I could do that vertically. 
but you can put half of it together vertically and then the other half and then just put them horizontal and start clamping and that'll close up. It's a pretty satisfying thing to see this come together like this. And if you get a chance to build something like this with uh, your son or daughter or grandchild, you know, it's pretty thrilling for them. It's almost like Lego on steroids here. <laughs>